Hello, this is Colin Rennie here and welcome to the sixth of a series of videos on Rhino modeling and today we're going to be doing a session on filleting and also a little bit of information about um, how to do a variable radius fillet and how that works. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to need to do though to do this is to have something to fill it. So I'm going to start with a box. Uh, I'm not going to do this in any particular, I'm going to do it fairly arbitrarily. Uh, I'm going to make one box like this and when I do that and put it into uh, shaded you'll see I have an extrusion box and it's and this uh, box is I'll just copy it and paste it onto itself and then I'll move its instance over I'll show you the difference this is an extrusion it doesn't have Isaac curves on it if we explode this object here uh, and then rejoin it back together again we have a poly surface poly surface is effectively the same thing as a uh, an extrusion it's just that when Rhino has produced the object through an extrusion process such as a flat planar surface being extruded vertically upwards to create this box here which is what we did we defined the bottom plane and then we um, extruded it vertically upwards it defines an extrusion um, and that is slightly different in Rhino terminology to a um, polysurface and you can see that here in the uh, properties here if we take this object here and look at its details we have here valid extrusion uh, and this one here we have look at the details a valid poly surface so it defines it slightly differently uh, in all intents and purposes though they are in fact the same thing and the same functions will work on those um, so what we're going to do first though is to show you how to fill it this object so though so we've got two identical objects I'll put them here um, by the way, it's quite important, um, I'll just show you this at this point here, when you have objects that are in three-dimensional space, um, the, the perspective of those objects change. If I put this object over here, in perspective it gets further and further away the, the, the further I leave it. And the more I move it around, I can end up losing objects, although to some extent put that back where it was. Um, here we are, okay? Um, if I move objects around, you'll see that they move here. But in, if you look in perspective, in the front and right view, they don't actually change position. So I could take this object, I could put it all the way over here. There we go, put it all the way over there. And you'll see in perspective view, it's miles away. But in um, right view, it's actually exactly the same distance away. It looks like it's here. This is because front and right view and, and top view don't have any perspective to them. The only view that has perspective is perspective itself. So that's one of the things you need to be careful of uh, when you're modeling. So if I zoom right out here, you'll see the object is way over here. I can put it back into the plane this way and that moves it back into the uh, into the construction plane. So there they are. Okay, so you need to be careful of that when you're looking at these objects. Let's put that back into view. So that's us here. If you ever get stuck, by the way, you can do this. If you if you lose an object, you can also press zoom extends, which is this one here, which zooms the, the viewport that you've act, you're actively using to the extents of the objects that are in your scene. So if you happen to have an object that's way over here and you're in this position here and you, you're in this viewport and you press zoom extends, it will zoom to the point that you can see that object there and you can pull it back. So you know when you lose objects, you can find them again that way. There we go. Um, so I'm going to fillet these objects here, and I'm going to use the variable radius fillet to do that. Variable radius fillet, you'll find it in solid tools. It's this one here, variable radius fillet. Um, and that can be used to uh, either produce a variable radius, which I'll show you, or, or not, just to produce a single radius fillet all the way around an object. Um, and I'll just show you what a fillet looks like to start with. I'm going to press the tool, it's going to say select edges to fillet, I'm going to choose these edges here, and it defaults to one as a radius. Um, and you can change that radius by typing it in, but I'm just going to put one for now. You click it twice and it will agree with those, those terms twice and it will come up with these fillets. Now this fillet has a radius of one. You can fillet a line, I'm going to show you that now. I'm just going to take a polyline with my shift key down to or toggle ortho on, and I have a polyline here. I'm going to fill it that. I can I can do that in a number of ways, but I'll do curve, fill it curve here. Um, and this is a radius of 10. I'm going to change that to a radius of 1, just like the other one. And I'm going to zoom in a bit, and I'm going to go this line and this line, and you'll see it puts a little circle on that. And that, if we have a circle, draw a circle, and I use a send point here and an end point here, that circle there will have a radius of 1. 
okay it's one millimeter um, and uh, that's how that's how it works so you have a ball basically or a circle in the case of the fillet this is just a circle that's being used to tangentially um, come off this line and join this line uh, but in the case of a three-dimensional object that ball actually has a three-dimensional structure to it so as it goes round the corner here you can see it turns a corner and you get this kind of three-sided um, surface appearing um, at the edge of it so that's if you like a ball rolling round the inside of your box okay and that's effectively the way it works it's actually called a rolling ball fillet uh, for that reason um, what we're going to do now is increase the size of this fillet to show you what that looks like and also to show you how you do that so I'm going to undo a couple of times just to there we go get back to that box and then I'm going to rerun the command here solid tools variable radius fillet this one here this time I'm going to choose a radius of 10 I'm going to change it first then choose my lines and then do it twice and you'll see you know a bigger fillet radius will produce larger fillets um, now this this begs the question how big can you get when you do a fillet and there is a limit to this because as soon as you uh, reach a, a theoretical limit to the fillet then Rhino will try and produce the fillets but it won't often manage it so let's just see how big this box is I'm gonna um, I don't know how big it is at the moment because I, bought, I built it fairly arbitrarily, but we'll go from this point to this point, we'll get an end point, and we'll say this box is 36.84 millimeters. So half of that is about 18. So if we, 18 or 19. So if we made a, our filleting ball 18, it would probably work. Let's try it. We'll go back to uh, solid tools. We'll go to fill it, and we'll check this object here. Uh, oh, I did it first. You've got to change your fillet first. I'm going to press fill it. I'm going to change it to 18 millimeters. Enter then we're going to choose the lines that we want to fill it and press enter twice and you'll see that it will fill it. And there's a very small gap between those two things but let's try 19 and see what that does uh, we're going to do it again uh, and we're going to change this to 19 enter and we're going to fill it this object here and you'll see that when you try and do that he will get all sorts of strange geometry appearing um, the the fillet will try and run but it won't actually manage and you'll get this this kind of strange um, projection of the of the rolling ball trying to come round uh, and it's not actually a true object so the reason for that is because 19 is bigger than 236 is okay uh, 1938 uh, and so the filleting ball is bigger than half of this so effectively what will happen is that the the fillet will come round here and they will cross over each other and when they cross over each other Rhino has a problem in generating the fillet so you must be careful with that when you're producing fillets that the filleting size, the filleting ball is not bigger than half your smallest length of one side um, so you've got to sometimes check the sizes of things this quite often happens when you're going around complex objects with, uh, with, with a lot of curvature to them um, and you've got tight spots for the rolling ball to, to roll around that tight spot sometimes will be too big or, to, or a ball will be too big to go around that tight spot so your, your ball must be smaller than the width of that tight spot okay imagine the ball rolling around it's got to be wider than twice the narrowest gap okay so that's that so that's a single radius fillet I'm gonna we, we know that this box is a certain height but you can actually and I'll show you here a variable radius fillet you can you can put different radii in here um, and there's a number of ways of doing this um, so for example if I put the solid tools on I'm gonna turn my solid points on here I'm gonna take this point and just drop it down uh, to give me um, a sort of a, a, a change in the shape here um, and that's just an editing so in that method of editing um, solid forms I'm going to escape that to get the points away so I've edited that form to give it a slightly different shape so now we can try some different fillets on this one so I'm going to press variable radius fillet and here we've got a radius of 19 we know that's too big so we're going to choose 10 um, and we're going to choose for 10 we're going to go for this line this line this line and this line um, we'll also manage this line and this line, no problem, and this line here, uh, this edge here, this vertex. We'll manage 10 on all of those. I wouldn't have thought that would be a problem. Uh, we'll go now to the next radius, and we'll change the next radius. I've clicked in the command bar there, next radius, and we'll make next radius uh, 4, enter. And this time we're going to choose this line, this line, this line, this line, and this line. So all of the curves have been, all of the edges of this object here, have been um, have been assigned a filleting radius, and we can click twice to agree those. And you'll see when you do that, we have a larger radius here and a smaller radius here. So you can change the filleting size according to 
um, the, the tightness. But that's not the end of it. You can actually change the filleting size on the fly as well, and you can add handles. So what we're going to do now is do that to this. So you, want, you don't want you to practice doing that and have a go at doing that, see how you can get on with, uh, with producing fillets. Um, variable radius fillet, though, next thing I'm going to do is show you how to create a variable radius fillet with handles on this one. Uh, and that is to change the variable radius as it flows through the, the, uh, the edge that it's filleting. So I'm going to choose variable radius fillet. We've got a variable radius of 4. I'm going to change that to 10 to start with. And we're going to choose this here. I'm going to choose those guys there. And that means that all those basic edges are going to be filleted at 10. Okay? Uh, and I'm going to go enter. And the next time I'm going to say add handle. The current radius is 10. I'm going to change that to, let's say, 5. Enter. And we can now put um, handle. You see, it will allow you to stick a handle with a radius of 5 on various places. So let's stick these in the mids of all of these points here. So I'm sticking mid, mid, mid to all of, the, all of my edges. That wasn't mid actually, never mind. Mid there. Um, mid here. There we go. Mid there, mid there, mid there, mid there. So that should have mids on all of those there. I think, yes. That's, that's done it. We'll press enter, enter again. And you can see that the fillet varies its radius. So it starts in the corners of being quite big, and as it rolls around with curvature, it will curve as it goes through. Um, it will go down to a radius of 5 at the handle, and then it will go back up to a radius of 10 at the corners here. So you can end up with some, some reasonably nice geometry fairly quickly doing that. When Ryo creates fillets, though, it is actually creating new surfaces. It's a, it's a destructive method, so it's, it's removing information about the original form. This just has deleted some of the geometry and added geometry in. So, for example, if I was to explode this object here, you'll see that it explodes into separate surfaces. Here's a surface, here's a surface, here's a surface. We can recreate, it can delete that, you can see inside it, it's actually just like uh, all the other objects, it's just the boundary representation. And we can create, if we want to, we can either undo, or we can show you just how that, that surface is created. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, Surface Tools, here's Surface, and the one I want is actually under here, no it's not, because I'm not in Surface Tools. don't know where I'll go to Standard, I don't know where it is in Standard, it's in here, and it's surfaced in three or four corners three or four edge curves, which is, where is it going, this one here, and I'm going to choose this edge, this edge, and this edge, and enter, and it creates that kind of surface. Sometimes it, depending on the order that you put them in, it finishes the singularity on the final two that you've joined together. So if I chose those in a different order, um, it would choose, it would put the, the, the form in a different place. There you go, put it at the top, just like those ones are. Um, so that's probably more accurate um, to keep things nice and neat. Um, there we go. Now, um, when we analyze the surfaces here, we'll see, and I'm going to use a zebra to do that. I'm going to select all of these, and I'm going to analyze surface zebra. I'll change direction, put them on vertical. Um, and you'll see when you look at a zebra pattern, zebra shows up the angles that things change. You'll see that the angle here changes very abruptly. That means that I've got tangential continuity in this curvature here. This means that the curve changes by a tangent. That was similar to the ball when I showed you the rolling ball rolling through it. A ball touching a surface will come off at a tangent. It's not continuous in curvature, so, so it doesn't have a, a smooth curve coming off it. There's always an abrupt change in the edge. And later on I'll show you some other things about that. But for now, what I want you to do is just to get used to this process of filleting. Um, why we fill it though is, um, is should be reasonably obvious that when you build objects in Rhino, such as this extrusion here, um, the edges of this object are going to be infinitely sharp. You know, the, the surfaces are infinitely thin, therefore the edges are infinitely sharp. And that isn't something that we see very often um, in real life. So if we were to render this object or make an image of this object, it would appear to be very, very, I'll change it to rendered here. You'll see the edges will appear to be far too sharp for reality. These objects appear much more natural because their edges are being rounded off. These have probably been rounded a bit too much. You can see in rendered view as well, you can see some of the some of the edges here. The filleting is not a perfect tool. It doesn't create very smooth curvature. Sometimes you get this kind of slightly jerky, and this is probably just the rendering, but slightly jerky um, edge generation. That's because there's a singularity at the top here. Um, but this is a little bit smoother here. It's not bad. 
the geometry there, but this geometry just looks too sharp. So adding a fillet to this, if I just add a small fillet here, I'm going to go to Solid Tools, uh, Variable Radius Fillet here. We're going to do a, a fillet of 0 0.5, Enter, and we're going to fillet all these curves here. I'm going to just make sure I have a box over all of those. And we're going to render that. Now, now you can see the edges have got some kind of definition to them, and the object already looks slightly more realistic, even though we're only in simple rendered view and so no materials applied to this object whatsoever. Um, but filleting is a really important process. It helps it helps to generate more realism in renders. Um, it also helps to round off corners for uh, sharp objects, um, such as gears or things like that. You would want to fillet those. Um, so it's a very useful tool, a very powerful tool, and one that you need to get a handle on. It takes a little bit of practice to get good at it. So the thing you need to do is try a variable radius fillet like this one with handles. Try a variable radius fillet with different sizes of fillets. Try manually filleting one surface and then another surface. Um, you can do them in order. You can do all the surfaces and all the edges in, in one go. Um, you can do one edge and then another edge. And just try those, try those out and experiment with those and see what you can get. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that, and take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.